make so they'll every day to go a long way. God's love never strayed from the day to day. So I pray, keep the faith and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, say the Lord. It takes a little every day to go a long way. God's love never strayed from the day to day. So I pray, keep the faith and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, say the Lord. It's the things you believe in that keep you striving Yo, I'm aiming for the top, so I keep on climbing Surviving, rising like the sun in the uh. east If the Lord be the light, let him shine Good morning, good morning everyone And welcome to another exciting edition of the Quad Squad Where the Bible meets current events Today I'm joined with my guests and friends Sean, Stacy and Dr. Sonia Evans, who's sitting in for Ivan. And we have a special, special guest who's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, Dr. Pastor James Doggett Sr. Let's welcome him, welcome him. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Dr. Doggett, if you guys don't know, he is the pastor, the senior pastor of Patmos Chapel at the Well. He has taught, he has uh, taught at um, Oakwood, different schools. He's um, started music ministries. My goodness, there's just so much. You, you've mentored so many pastors. It's a great thing to have the legend, the man, the legend, not the myth. Dr. James Doggett. <laughs> he, he's a man that needs no introduction, Dan. He, he needs no introduction. Look at that. He needs no introduction. He forgot to put take off the mute button. Unmute your mic because we, we want to hear every word you say. <laughs> well, I got off to a great start. Hey, look, yes, yes, yes. We got the most important thing, and that's I am a fan of the Quad Squad. Oh, I praise the Lord. I am on the show. On this Sabbath morning. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, we are so glad that you are here and we are going to treat you just like family. So this is how we do. We kind of kick it off with some of the current events. And then after that, we go into the Bible study. Um, so what kind of kind of pricked some of our interest in Stacy? This seemed like this was on your mind. Is this uh, environment uh, summit, it, it, you know, climate control summit? Why does that stand out in your mind? Yeah, it's just kind of this this particular summit because they, they've had these summits before. But mm -hmm. This particular summit is just kind of interesting. Um, what's on the agenda? Of course, you know the hope when you hear them talking about climate control and all of this, the hope is to decrease the carbon footprint. But what's really happening is because it's so hot. Um, they're really trying to help cool the planet is the concept. Um, and you guys might remember years ago, decades ago now, where they were talking about there's a hole in the, you know, in the um, atmosphere. I'm trying to remember the term they used to ozone. use. Ozone. In the ozone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In the ozone. And we had to stop using all these aerosol sprays and all of this and that. But so, you know, and one of the things that they had noticed during the pandemic and quarantine is that there was not as much emissions of gases and toxins and smoke. And uh, some of the air cleared in some places where they would normally have smog. Mm -hmm. So what, why, what, what, what is the relevance to, to you? This, you know, it's like you. this was on your heart. So yeah, so you don't watch the okay. So <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm waiting on I'm waiting on that big bang. Of the United States is over there, Dan. But you know, this is just kind of interesting because of the leaders that are also meeting with um, uh, the Pope as well, and what they're talking about. One of the things they're looking at is you know the importance of having a family day. But before, oh, but before. My, my brethren get all excited and <laughs> start, you know, and start linking the vaccine to, okay, I'm just, I just, you know, just another plug that the vaccine is not <laughs> the mark of the beast. I'm just saying these things are also taking place. But you know what? I, if you don't mind, I'm going to tag team onto Dr. Doggy because he has a little bit more insight around some of that too. Yeah. Listen, listen. This is an interesting thing going on. I hope everybody's paying attention to it because, first of all, 
the idea of global warming. There's a lot of science that says that's true. That's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what is going to get interesting is the solutions. I mean, just look at who's gathering, first of all. What do they call this? COP26? Yes. Yeah, these are leaders from across the globe, about 200 leaders, and they're assembled. And in the midst, by the way, uh, the, the Pope will be there. And I'm not an alarmist. I'm not an alarmist, but I am a student of the scriptures. And I am really paying attention to this because back in 2015, in a papal encyclica, which is a letter, you know, to all of the faithful Catholics, in that particular letter, uh, he kind of makes it clear that because of global warming, we need to all come together. Unity is a good thing, but you got to be mm -hmm. careful the kind of unity that you have. And what he's suggesting is that to save our planet, to save our families, to help us all to be in a more healthy condition, taking it easy, uh, what we need to do is stop working on a particular day, shut down commerce on a particular day, and just hang out with family and do things like go to church. And that is a good idea on the surface. But if you read that encyclica, and this really is connected to this idea of unity in dealing with global warming, he makes it clear that Sunday needs to be that day when everybody comes together, he, in fact, in the letter calls it the Sabbath. He says that that is like the Jewish Sabbath. And I just have to be real cautious with these kinds of things. When you're trying to accomplish a good purpose, which is save the family, save the planet, but you don't pay attention to certain things that are clearly articulated in the word of God, then that's the kind of unity you don't want. It's like trying to get a good result in a bad way. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this carefully. And the, the Pope has really shown himself to be the leader in this issue of global warming and saving our planet. And he's kind of told us what he thinks will work. And so we've got to be careful that we don't go after a good end in a bad way. That's mm. that. That's the mm. whole deal for me. I, I, I like that. that. Mm. I, I like I like the way you said that. Um, watching, we need to be vigilant and just watch and and be um, studious and see what's taking place. Now I'm I'm going to pivot. Something else that caught my attention. I'm I'm glad you you have said that, Doctor Dolly. Uh, something else that caught my attention this week too is um Sean, you, you um had um this week you you were saying you you had to go to parent teacher conference. You took off from work a little bit early and um you want to see how your 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 kids was doing. I was like, oh that's nice, you know. And um <clears throat> it, it's it's been a lot of parent teachers conferences, I'm sure. Dr. Doggett and uh, Sonia, Dr. Sonia, you guys remember the times going to the school and um, checking, checking with, uh, checking on, on on your kids. You know, it's, it's a normal thing. So it's like, I don't understand not in the news, it's become a, a, a hot point that these board, at these board meetings, these, these school boards, the, the the school board people have to start to have uh, bodyguards, and now there's police showing up there. And I'm like, this don't remind me of when I was in school when 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 they had board meetings. All they talked about was the bad food in the cafeteria. <laughs> and, you know, and I went to a public school, so it's like, what's going on? And in in uh, Sonia, the reason why I brought you on too because you are on a school board, and and. And, you know, you guys read some of these tippets that I said, sent to you there. You know, does that happen at your school, uh, Dr. Evans? <laughs> well, I mean, the climate as far as the political climate today is totally different than what we've ever seen before. Here in Kansas, in the Blue Valley School District, and it's one of the top, it is the top school district in Kansas. There was a scheduled board meeting. And that was supposed to be held at the board offices. Unfortunately, because the board members received death threats, yeah. they, they had to have the board meetings via Zoom. So that is happening all across the country. 
Uh, unfortunately, it's been politicized as far as what's being taught in the classrooms. And now because um, uh, certain factions uh, feel that in 2022 that they could reach out and grab more suburbanites if they uh. could throw issues that the suburban people are concerned with, such as education. So th they're trying to say that the Democrats are controlling things and they're 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 not responsible um, because one thing they want to teach the critical race theory in the classroom, whereas the Republicans, uh, they're fighting against that. Matter of fact, we have 22 states currently that have banned talking about racial things within the classroom. Mm. So and that's so unfortunate because our children are not being taught history. Uh, if it's not uh, uh, copacetic for the Republicans, if they don't like the truth, then that means that they can just ban it all together. And mm. so it becomes so politicized, whereas now board members are afraid and they're resigning, too, because they're fighting, they're afraid and they're frustrated. So, so Dr. Dog, it's a little like you, you wanted to say something, like you ready to jump in like double dutch, you know? No, hey, listen, I, I was listening to that and it, it just reminds me of the times in which we live. Our last president really did uncap um, hatred that's been mm -hmm. pent up for so long. He made it okay to bring it public. And it's really sad because people are so locked in their corners yeah. that they're listening to an information loop mm -hmm. um, of just what they want to hear. And uh, it, it's so sad the way we see anger that is so unchecked now. And we saw that in our last president. You know, I, I, I think that he made it very, very uh, popular. Mm -hmm. Didn't a school board um, superintendent up in Ohio uh, resign? Yeah. Because, yeah. What, what did she resign for? It had something to do with them refusing to ratify. Yes, they, they felt like her ideas were not in line with uh, their ideas. So. Well, and actually, she helped pin um, some type of policies as far as combating racial uh, yes. strife. And so she was yeah. involved in that. And because of that, um, the pressures that she received because she wanted more equity and diversity, and she, she had a roadmap on how they can accomplish that. And they, the, the Republicans didn't like that, so they pressured wow. her. So she's not going to seek uh, office again. And then now another thing that they're doing, too, when we, we coined, because of the George Floyd, we had coined the term diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now that has flipped, and now it's become something negative, and they're using yeah. it against uh, society. Yeah. That's, that's, that's terrible. I, I was reading where... Uh, there was this hospital, not here in Florida, where there was this uh, black gentleman who was interviewed about five times and they hired him. But then they rescinded the contract because they said mm, he has and he was going for a diversity position. And they said mm, he's too sensitive about racial issues. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. They hired him for this and they said, no, nah, you're too sensitive. So they rescinded the contract. And, and, and you know, to me, you know, you when 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 um, SNL when I was doing my research, I saw we SNL do a research. spoof on, on on the board. You know, the board meetings. I was like, wow, you know, it's a serious issue when SNL <laughs> spoofs. <laughs> so, so, so Stacy, did you hear anything like that? that was that happening at Sean School? You know, <laughs> no, I didn't catch that SNL. Uh, <laughs> That Saturday Night Live program, <laughs> but I did. I was doing research. I saw it. You know. I need to do my research. I hear you, <laughs> but I, yeah, but definitely you can sense that the um, the temperature is rising mm -hmm. at these meetings, and there are so many more parents taking the mic, and and sometimes Chitty even the young Literally. people are taking the mic, and they're being booed. They're young people, you know. But again, I, I give it back to the parents who I have, and I got to tell you, my friends know. I have a lot of respect for parents who are trying to train children with the right um, morals, the right values, um, 
with good, sound, strong uh, Christian principles, even in this day and climate. You all are in mm -hmm. my prayers and you all are doing, many of us, mm -hmm. many of you are doing a wonderful job out there, like Sean, for example, and Connie. Oh, thank you, Stacey. You're doing a wonderful job. So mm -hmm. keep up the good work. Hey, so it, I want to it, say it, that, it, that guy that you were speaking of that was going for that, uh, that diversity and equity job, mm -hmm. executive, he's, uh, he's suing the the mm. people that rescinded the offer because he drove his own Porsche SUV and they complained that he rented a car that was too expensive, but they never talked to him to find out that was his car. So they were <laughs> trying to find different mm. reasons as not to hire him. So he found out the inside scoop. And so now he's suing the 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 organization. Mm. That's just hey, Dan, Dan, let me clap my hands for that, though, the suing thing. Listen, mm -hmm. history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. But what is a little different this time around? I mean, racism is not new. It's mm -hmm. not new. Uh, but what's a little different than the civil rights era mm -hmm. is there were people, more of them, in my opinion, who are willing to stand up and fight against it. Maybe this time around, yeah. there are too many people in the oppressed classes that have risen themselves mm. and they've taken on the persona of the persecutors, mm. those who are in fact the ones oppressing. And so there seems to be a muted kind of response mm -hmm. to the overt racism that we see today. Mm. It used to be at a school board meeting, they might go back out in the parking lot and talk mm. that talk, but now mm. they're stepping up and being bold with it, making, making yeah. Nazi salutes and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And did did didn't Cruz Ted Cruz try to defend that? Out of yes, he did. He did. It is it's <laughs> defend the undefensible. But you know, wow. We, we we can we can continue on with this, but we gonna we gonna transition to the, into the less transition. But listen, hot. let's That's let's hot. tell people keep your fight. I was like, okay, all right. We're going. Keep what you say? You. Keep your fight in you. That's yes, all I yes, say. yes. Say Twenty times. Keep your fight. We can't stop fighting right now. And Democrats better man up and stop yes, allowing this stuff to go while they try to be real coy and sweet with it. I'm not mm -hmm. saying get ugly with it, but sometimes mm -hmm. you got to fight. Jesus kicked That's over right. some tables when yeah. people were being abused and mistreated. And we got to kick over some tables right now and stop taking this so muted. Yeah. <laughs> along. Right. Unity right. is no good when you're trying to get along with wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. Say that again. We hey. need, need, need again. a t-shirt for that. Hey. <laughs> Unity is no good when you're trying to be unified with bad stuff and That's bad right. people. That's no, right. we're supposed to rise up. We're supposed to rise up. Come on. Let's That's get our right. fight back. That's oh, right. That's right. right. I, I like that. And, and it's and it's so it, it also was in the news, and this is so good in transition to our um how we treat our strangers within our gates. They they un unveiled right here in in Central Florida the uh, statue of Mister Rogers. Uh, you know he he was all about the neighbor. He was a, he was a pastor too. So you know Sean, the the you know I, I love for you to to tie the strings. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing because he you know, Man, you, you got the strings all over the place. We've been talking about Ted Cruz. You know, we talk about the school board. Now, now you're throwing in Mr. Rogers on me. Who are the people in your neighborhood? That's wow. right. The strangers within your gate. Listen, all, all I can say is I, I grew up watching Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers was dear to my heart. And mm -hmm. and and I, I think that Mr. Rogers had a character very similar to that of, of Jesus Christ. And it was I liked the way that he handled racism during his, his day and time. I remembered one of the episodes where he had <clears throat> um, one of his one, one of the individuals on his show, which, which was a black individual, come come in and, and he was I think he had his shoes off and he had his feet his barefoot in a in a pool of water. Mm -hmm. And they began to have a discussion of race. And I think one of the biggest problems we have in, in, in our days is that we're not having the discussion with one mm -hmm. another. We're not communicating mm -hmm. with, 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 with one another. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, oftentimes we see things that are very offensive. And because of that, you know, we go straight into an argument and a, and a debate. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times it's led by the political 
arena that we are in. But I, my hope and my goal is that the church can provide a different environment. I, mm -hmm. I know that's what we try to do at the well, where, where everybody is, is welcome, mm -hmm. whether or not you're Republican or, or, or Democrat, you voted for uh, Joe Biden or, or, you know, bless you, even if you voted for, for Donald Trump. But the most important thing is this, is do you love God? And as, as, as the uh, Bible study brings out, and do you love your neighbor? And we learned so much even in Jesus' days that the people of Israel had a problem mm -hmm. loving their neighbor. They, they had a problem loving the Samaritans. They had a problem loving the Romans. And so that's a message to, to us. And I hope that through this lesson, we can learn how to love the unlovable. So Stacy, hmm. who is your neighbor? Hmm. As a matter of fact, do you know your neighbor across the street on the side? Uh, of the <laughs> your In neighbor, you? uh, actually, Dan, <laughs> Um, I can walk to your house. Okay, but that's good. <laughs> actually, actually, you know who's really good at that? I'm gonna tell you, my husband is wonderful at that. Mm. I will drive in the uh, the garage, close the door, go inside, <laughs> and wave at people and talk to people. So now he's actually made friends with his neighbors, and they are wonderful people. And their their children sometimes will come by, knock on the door, sell me something, you know, for school or come visit. Uh, one day I was outside doing something and they brought me a flower. I thought, oh, how nice. And I was like, you know what? I really know that I wouldn't have known them if it wasn't for my husband. So I need to take, you know, a feather out of his hat. But he's really good at that. But beyond that, when we think about our neighbors, it's not just who lives next door. You know, um, mm -hmm. our neighbor is 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 a strange is someone we don't know very well that's why we're talking about the stranger within our gates you know if if i have an up you know go ahead and judge me but once in a while i do have mm -hmm. someone who comes over and does a deep cleaning that you know to help me maintain because my life is you know so full um and and yet that person is my stranger even though we have a business arrangement where they come they do a deep clean i reimburse them Frankly, I shouldn't be oppressing that person. Wow. You know, I shouldn't be like, I'll pay yeah, you. You jump, you, you jump in space, you jump in space. <laughs> I'll pay you next month. But, <laughs> but really, our, whoever we run into, we should be considering them our yes. neighbor. Yes. And, and so, yeah, whoever, if we profess to uh, abide by the commandments, um, so Sonia, um, Dr. Sonia, <laughs> what is uh, the first greatest commandment and then the second greatest commandment? Okay, the first and great commandment is you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. Essentially that's saying, mm -hmm. and essentially that's, to me, that means with your whole essence, your whole intrinsic nature of character. So mm. that means that your whole being, you you got you must love the Lord your God with everything that you have. And then the the second great commandment is that, and that's taken from um, Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And the second greatest commandment is that you, first it says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. And that changes a little bit in that particular chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. It's in your soul in all your mind. And the second greatest commandment is equally important. It says that you must love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Wow. So, so, so doc, doctor, um, dog, it. What, what's the importance of loving your neighbor as yourself? Oh, that's that's really what it's all about. I like the text in first John 20 and verse four. It's one of my favorite texts that says, if you say you love God, mm -hmm. but you hate your 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 fellow man, I'll use that term. You're a liar because mm. you can't possibly love God who you have not seen and not love your neighbor, your brother, your sister, the stranger, other people. Loving mm. other people is an indicator that you love God. You cannot love God and hate people. Mm. That would almost be like you saying, Doc, I love you. You're you're great and abuse my children. You can't mm. do that. 
That's a demonstration that you do not have respect for me. You do not love me. And it's the same way. We've got to love not just our family, but the family of God. And you know who that includes? Everybody. Yes, everybody. 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 <laughs> and God. God is love. And those of us who are his children and we believe in him, we are to reflect that to everybody, not just people who can benefit us or people mm -hmm. who are our blood relatives or our mm -hmm. clique. We especially demonstrate mm -hmm. true Christianity when we love our enemies and mm -hmm. people we don't Ooh. know and the oh. lowest in society. Oh, and when I say lowest, there. I mean the ones who are considered the lowest oh. in society. That mm -hmm. is true religion. That's James too, by the way, also. That's mm -hmm. true religion. All the rest of it is just for personal benefit. So Sean, I saw you getting excited. You were jumping up and down your seat. You were rocking back and forth, going back and forth. So so, so, so it sounds like you, you agree with Dr. Doggett uh, about about this love thing and how you treat people. Yeah, um, I, I, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think oftentimes, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. When we hear the term neighbor, you know, we think of, you know, think of my friends in the quad squad. I think of my church family. Think about people who, you know, may have gone to the, to my same school. People who are like minded, both politically and 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 religiously. Mm -hmm. And and as we look at this text, and specifically the story, and we talked about this before, of the good of the good Samaritan, I mean, Doc hit it on the head. Who is my neighbor? It's that person that is really probably I would look at look at as an enemy. Because in the story of the prodigal of not the prodigal son of the good Samaritan, the Samaritans were considered quote unquote enemies to the Jews. So much so that when when Jesus was telling the story, the 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 um the Jewish person couldn't even say the name Samaritan. He just said the person who 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 did well who who did well to the other individual. And when we think about that mindset in today's political assignment, mm -hmm. it, it's it's I have to be honest, it's difficult to love my neighbor. It's <laughs> to look at Ted Cruz seemingly defend the Nazi salute. It's it's difficult to see many of the things that from a political standpoint, I see quote unquote Republicans do and say, okay, well, that's my neighbor. It's difficult, mm -hmm. and we talked about this in past episodes, to look at the individuals that were a part of the January 6th insurrection and say, okay, that's my neighbor. Look, look, is that the person I'm supposed to be loving? That's a little bit difficult. That's a little bit harder. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. if I even want that person to even come to my church, or I don't know if I saw that person on the side of the road that I would be willing to help them. So it challenges my religiosity, mm. my spirituality, when I think of the fact that the neighbor is really the person that I would normally not even like. So Stacy, Stacy, yes. Yes. It, it, it actually this could be a Sean question, I'm, I'm gonna pose it to you. Now, you know, in, in judging righteously, in, in judging fairly, it was very important that, that, that God held the, you know, um, is, is the children of Israel uh, accountable to how they treated people with, you know, that was less, uh, had less means, the poor and the weak. And, and even now in society, though, it's, it's, it's very important how we treat people who are less because they, you know, people with money, John, I mean, uh, Sean can attest to, to this. They have better access to health care. They have better access to the, the legal system, they can make deals where people who are poor, they have a public defendant and they just say, hey, just take just take this, take take the plea. You only get five or six years, you know, where if they had the means, uh, they wouldn't get any time. So, you know, what type of responsibility do we have uh -huh. to be fair to people yeah. who, who have less means? It's, it's so important. So let me start with um, Sean's point, then we'll go into your point. I mean, frankly, there will be no Democratic or Republican heaven. Um, there will be some people who are Democrats that are not right. Um, and we still have to love them and some who are Republican. I just, I just know that right now our nation is a little polarized because of the leadership before, it, you know, um, and, and not to point fingers, 
But frankly, like a meme says, sometimes you need to just turn off the TV and the news and go love your neighbor. So <laughs> when you think about when you think about your, you know, those that are um, you want, we call them underprivileged or, or you know, not um, who are in need. Um, I, I like to stay humble because mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why and, and tie in the lesson with that, you know. There was a group of us that used to go out to Lake Eola, you know, over you know a decade ago, and go help to feed the the homeless mm -hmm. um, at the time when it was allowed. And some of them, some of the homeless, have master's degrees. Some came out of very good homes, um, but we have these prejudgments. Mm -hmm. Some ran upon hard times. Some their marriages and finances fell apart. Some had addiction problems. Mm -hmm. um, and we realized it was a thin line mm. between us and them. Mm. Some of us were one paycheck away for, from a situation like that occurring. And so the Lord tells us to remember, mm -hmm. we were strangers once. Yes, we yes. We were strangers. There was nothing special about us mm -hmm. that he should look down from his throne, right? The Bible says that he owns the heavens and the highest heavens. So what's so special about us? <laughs> you know, there exactly. was nothing. Um, he put his name on us. Um, he died for us. He created us and, and reclaimed us. And so so as we look at those that may be in a position that may either owe us, work for us, mm -hmm. or what we consider to be lesser, and, and I, I'm very careful with stuff like that because I have seen um, what you would consider to be poverty-struck homes, and love is there. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen homes that is, that's 10 rooms, and, and it's cold, and nobody in the family gets along, and they have all this money, and they're miserable. So we just need to remember that we're called to be like the God we serve. Yes, yes. No respecter of person, and not oppress the poor. Yes. Um, there was a scripture, I think it's somewhere in, um, I was reading it, forgive me if I, I don't quote it right, but it was saying in the study that if a man owes you, I think if he mm -hmm. has like collateral or something, right. go get the man out of his house that night or go Deuteronomy to the 24. Deuteronomy 24. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 24. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, I got to behave because, you know, <laughs> but I'm sure that it's like, don't go you know, put him on blast and humiliate him in front of his family. Have some mercy, have some grace when you're dealing with that person. I like that practical yeah. example. Mm -hmm. So, so so Dr. Sonia, mm -hmm. um I was um I I I I was reading also uh in scripture where it said um it's very important how you treat the alien and if you do wrong by him you should do right. And it was interesting, you know, where do we get the word alien? I think it's biblical. Then we say illegal aliens. So, it, you know, um, yeah, illegal aliens, people who are not of this country, mm -hmm. um, this, this, this of the United States, they're here in some form or fashion because there's a better opportunity. I think a lot of people who came over here uh, in some form or fashion, you know, they were immigrants. So when they put a... Uh, a label sometimes it makes them the other, and and when when you know we have a, you know we have a habit of making people the other. So um so here's my point, and when 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 the Bible said to make it right, a lot of um this didn't get a lot of news, but Biden is going to pay the families that were separated from the border who crossed over and and the, and the kids who were separated. So you know I like that. You know, we have to stick to some biblical, we have to stick to biblical principles and, and try to make restitution. What, what do you think about that? Well, um, first of all, I think before we can love our neighbors, we, we, I mean, truly love our neighbors and not just give lip, lip service to it. We need to have a relationship with God because there are times when people would do things to you and you hold on to the things and because and, god says do not uh, hold grudge grudges against people or seek revenge so 
and we're all born to sin. So our natural inclination when someone does something to us it is to kind of close up or protect ourselves. So we have to constantly die to self. And also we have to have a relationship with God so we can be able to love ourselves, love God and love our neighbor the way God expects us to. Now, as far as the alien uh, is considered, you know, because they're from somewhere else, they're not from the United States or whatever, we have to remember that God created us all. So when he says, love thy neighbor, that includes all the above because he created the aliens. He, I don't like that term either, quote unquote aliens or uh, different ethnic groups, different races, because it's other than he created us all. We're all God's children and we're expected to love everyone, all of God's children. So, 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 doc, doc, uh, Dr. Doggett, uh, back to the restitution that I was uh, talking about, too. They, um, you know, biblically, it's interesting that a lot of these principles are biblical, you know, making restitution. Uh, and, and I like that. Um, and, you know, I'm not favoring one administration over the other, but that just didn't get any attention when that when when that edict was or, or that law was passed that he's going to make restitutions to the family that you know that came out so it biblically um it, it, it said that we should make restitution and um it's interesting i don't i don't know why my mind is taking me to uh reparations <laughs> <laughs> why not why not <laughs> but uh um, you know i don't know if i feel a certain way you know should you know, is that ex expecting too much? Well, it might be expecting too much given who America has proven herself to be mm -hmm. as it relates to those who built this nation. But America has given out um, reparations before to various mm -hmm. groups. And and I would suggest that it is kind of fair that reparations come our way. And you know what I mean by our way. <laughs> we built this country. We built this country. Mm -hmm. And we do deserve some uh, reciprocity, some, some, some restitution. We deserve it. But, hey, it probably isn't going to come. But here's the deal. As Christians, as Christians, we, can, mm -hmm. we can't be bitter Christians. We have to demonstrate the love of God to people we don't like, people we don't know. Here's what I see too often. Here's what I see too often. There are a lot of people who do um, community service time, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. They put on <laughs> yeah, basically and say, okay, now I'm going to do good <laughs> deeds for people who are in need. And so it's kind of a program that they run and participate <laughs> in as opposed to a lifestyle that they live. True mm. Christians are that way all the time. And they work past, they work past their um impulses because I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if you tell if I see Reg a Reagan banner or sticker on your car or flag in front of your house, I got a problem. I immediately there's something that rises up in me, but I've got to move past that. And on those occasions where I have, I've been su pleasantly surprised. There's a gentleman, I'll I'll tell this little story real fast. There's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's he's in the building where we do church. Hardcore, hardcore Trump fan and wanted to argue with us every day about, <laughs> how, you know, how awesome Trump was, etc. cetera. And uh, boy, I used to feel heat. I used to feel a little heat. I didn't like a Christian. He knew I was a minister, so I couldn't couldn't act like I felt and I could restrain myself to some degree. What was going on in my head, though, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, anyway, keep it real. Um, keep it real. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm just yep. telling you. And he was opposed to, to me, almost everything that was common sense, including wearing a mask and COVID's not real and all that until he got COVID. Mm. He got it and he got mm. it bad. And that man came back. One of the kindest, nicest, most defensive persons for us that I've ever seen in my life. So we've got to give people, first of all, a chance to make yes. some changes, to make some changes, but it doesn't happen when we put them in the enemy category yes, or we yes. keep them at bay. Whoever crosses our path is worthy of kindness and the Amen. love of God. And you'd be surprised how far that can go in helping Amen. to become better.
Hey man, so so Sean, I see you're looking up over there. We're right here. Stay focused. <laughs> I was I was reading I was reading the the, the article which you were referencing uh, uh, to, to to Biden, and, uh -huh. and the article was indicating that the Biden administration is in talks with the Justice Department uh, because there are several families who've retained counsel, uh, several families who had were separated from their children who have retained counsel. At, looking at bringing suit against the Justice Department for the separation. Uh, and it, it looks as well, the discussions right now, nothing's been approved, is that though the parents or families may be eligible from between 450 to right. $900,000. So I was looking to clarify or bring clear the point that you were making in terms of what Biden is, is looking at doing in terms to the families that were separated. And, 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 and that's important that we should, because we need to be accountable to our neighbors our strangers that's within our gates. That's what it's all yeah. about. Yeah. And um, it, 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 because I think Christ, you know, Christ didn't ask for no reparations, you know, he, he gave the ultimate sacrifice, his blood, you know, his blood was the reparation of, 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 of for sin. Hey, Dan, the way, the way you said that, can't argue with that. But I will say we deserve reparations. I, 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 I was like, uh, say, say, don't take it off the table. Like, you just made Biden's giving some folks like, how much was that, Sean? I started doing quick math. Like Four hundred thousand <laughs> people, and, and people still waiting for that mule. Uh, and, uh, and, and, okay. and to tie it into the lesson, let me the, say the the discussion about strangers <laughs> to the Israelites was pretty much this found in Exodus 22, 21. 21. It says, do not mistreat a, or oppress a foreigner, for you were foreigners in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. You were foreigners in Egypt. You know what that's like. So listen, when you have a foreigner come to your land, you should treat them differently than how you were treated. Now, on the discussions mm -hmm. of reparations, we know that when the, when the Israelites left Egypt, they didn't leave empty handed, <laughs> right? <laughs> In fact, when Moses went up to the hill, they took some of that gold and stuff that they had taken from Egypt, you know, to, to, to make a, a, a calf. So yeah. there is biblical support, if we want to talk about it, for reparations <laughs> to to those to those of us who, who had um, relatives who were slaves in this particular country, right? Yeah. And fact, I mean, we know pretty much most black people on this side of the hemisphere, hemisphere, we're in, in some point in time slaves. You know, Stacy, we talked about our heritage from Jamaica. I'll talk about my heritage from Bermuda. You know, we were all slaves at one point in time in, in one of these islands, South America as as, as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very biblical. Uh, that's for, that's for why I like what way. Ivan had shared, I think a couple of weeks back, how was it Bruce Beach? That beach yes. was returned to the family that owned it after all this year. So that just tells me that sometimes when we are trying to speak about the disparity and discrimination, it's not that we're trying to harp on old stuff or mm -hmm. paint people to be evil and racist. Now we're saying there are some real things that have occurred that have set, set us uh, a little bit further back from the starting line than most other people. And so had we all had the same starting line, you mm -hmm. might see something, you know, more progressive um, in general. So I, I was pretty pleased. I went looking that up. Um, that know, it was research and, uh -huh, and, that returned that beach to its rightful owner. And you know, I want to go visit. Yeah. And you know what? That's the reason why African-Americans or the reason why we don't have generational wealth now mm. is because we never had the opportunity to because of the fact that a lot of things were stolen from us. When we did invent things or create things, it was taken away from us. And, and even when our towns and our cities were striving that were mm -hmm. predominantly Black, I mean, they destroyed it. So that's why we don't have generational wealth to give our children, our progeny, because of what happened during slavery and during uh, the uh, civil rights movement before that. Hey, Dan, can I, can I jump in? Jump and say on, yes, thing? jump in. Here's, here's, here's a, a moral <laughs> lesson for us in that. The way we were treated, we cannot treat other people. And mm. we've got to be very, mm. very careful that we don't take on the attributes of those who have mistreated us. Mm. Israel, yes, they were, they were foreigners. 
at one time and they were badly mistreated. And so mm -hmm. God is saying to them, don't you dare mistreat other people. You've mm -hmm. experienced that. It's not right. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if you're not careful, you've heard the saying, abuse, uh, abused people sometimes will abuse. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There, there's something there's something about being a victim that that makes you at some point, if you're not careful, want to be or become a victimizer. And we've mm -hmm. got to make sure that as Christians, we follow a different mandate. And the mandate we've been given by God is that we've got to treat people with dignity and respect, even yes. when they don't treat us that way. We've got to treat people great because God made them. They're his possession. They are our brothers and sisters. And we don't love God and hate people. It's not mm. possible. We've got to love people if we claim to love God. And so that's why the foreigners, the strangers, those who are the least in society and experience the least appreciation, validation, and love really need to be targets of Christians. Everybody should be loved. But how yes. about those who aren't, who are losing hope, don't have a sense of self-value uh, anymore because of the way society has treated them? It's sometimes because of how they look, sometimes because of where they live, sometimes because of their, their lack of education. Sometimes the reasons that we, we devalue people are silly. And we've got to make sure that we fill that void because the world won't fill it. The world values wealth. The world values influence mm -hmm. and the right bloodlines and all of that. But Christians can't love people uh, for the bride. And, and the way that's interpreted in the scripture, it says it over and over. You know, don't be subject to bribery. Be be just uh, and be merciful with everybody. Bribery can sometimes be the feel good that I get mm -hmm. recognizing people who can at some point recognize me. You know, mm -hmm. how about the person who can't, they don't even have enough sense to say thank you, but they're still <laughs> God's child. So Mercy. I love them. I value them. I treat them with dignity and respect. I don't look over them. I don't. I don't pass out um, um, courtesy uh, it, it discriminately. I make sure that everybody in my sphere gets it because they're human. They're yeah. children of the Most High, and so, I so look for people like that. We should look for people who aren't getting it anywhere else. They ought to get it from us. That's right. So, so Sean, in in in, in keeping. Uh, in the same thought as uh, <clears throat> Dr. Doggett, how it, it also said in in, uh, well, in our Bible study, it kind of made some references to that you can uphold the letter of the law, but you you know if if, if you're not treating your neighbor right, then you're not upholding the spirit of the law, or you're breaking the spirit. Yeah. And as, as I listened to, 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 to Doc speak, um, I didn't want to come with a comment. I, I more so had, had, had a question and it ties into the same point that, that you made. O oftentimes, and I probably speak for several of the listeners or, or those who are watching. We talk about, yes, we have to, to love our, our neighbor and the stranger and we shouldn't treat people as they treat us. But I, I remember growing up and I would watch you know, keep your eyes on the prize. And I would mm -hmm. watch how they would have those hoses on people that look like me. And I watched the movie Mississippi Burning and what they did to those individuals that came down to Mississippi. And, you know, I said to myself, I would never drive through Mississippi a day in my life. You know, and, and I see these type of movies and I read the history, right? It's, it, how do I, after seeing this, not have the reaction of bitterness, you know, have the reaction of well, I want revenge. Maybe that, that that's a strong word, but you know, how do I live out what these things that I'm reading from a practical standpoint, and it not just be you know me trying to keep the law? How do I get the spirit to love someone who I see through a history has been so been so violent towards us? I've heard some some of speakers say, well. The reason why certain individuals are so afraid of us is because they know what they did to us in terms of lynching us on trees and what they did to our, our mothers. And so they are afraid that we're going to return violence to them based upon what they did to us. 
how do I not return violence for violence when it seems that it would be just to do so when I look at the history of, let's say, you know, this particular country? So answer your question. I, no. I don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's Neo hey, Lord hey, standing hey, in the hey, need of prayer. Help a brother out. Help this brother out <laughs> in, on the squad. Stacy, how can he, you know, he clearly got got some hate doing this. Some, some <laughs> issues <laughs> going. Man, I was about to tell you that I think this, listen, we're just kind of run away right now because we're all just going to say whatever's on our mind. And I, I heard Dr. Doggett and I said, ooh, I, I was like, ooh, ouch, ooh, my corns. Oh, ooh, <laughs> because, you know, you think to yourself, if someone is coming at you, you want to show strength too. You want to, you want to show that, well, you, you know, you're not scared. You're not intimidated. You know, you too can be strong and maybe you too can stop talking to, you, you know, whatever the case might be. But then you have I hear what Sean is saying. When I watched Selma, for example, I let I was like, wow, you know, what an eye opener. And um, but I also had to bring it back into perspective um, that there was a time where where people had to make sacrifices so mm -hmm. that there would be there would be more equality and opportunity and less less uh, uh, outright oppression of a people um, to change the mindset and now when you go back you know to even hear about some of the people at some of they're so apologetic some are not and there are some who are but I mean you, there's a young man who recently, um, posted on Craigslist that one of his classmates was a slave for sale. It was a mm. um, person of Love color it. who mm -hmm. was, he was saying, he was posting, and this is very recent, on Craigslist, that he's for sale. Um, and so when you hear of things like this, when you see things like this, you want to respond viscerally. You you want to react. You you want to get out your house and, and give everybody the evil eye that don't look like you. But <laughs> but just in case, just in case we forget, mm. you know, we had offended uh, uh, the, the savior. In other words, we transgressed ourselves. Mm. And it is only by his grace that we are unified back into the fold. And so, you know, the, the love that we're talking about, loving the stranger, he said, listen, what sense is it to love the person who loves you? Now you potentiate the love of God when you love the person that does not love you back, which is what Christ did. There's there's so many atheists and so many people who don't believe in him. And yet his blood covers them mm. that if they should turn back to him, he would accept them in a moment. And mm. so, you know, it's Sean, I hear you. It, it is not always easy, um, but we have to be careful of letting the world taint our purview because, you know, greater is he that is in yes. us than he that is in the world. And it's it's truly the spirit of God that gives us that love to be able to love someone who's look at how many stories. This is it. And I'm handing it back to you then. Look at how many stories there are out there about people who were racist, who were neo-Nazis, who were whatever they were. And it was a friend, someone who persisted in love and being a buddy and a good friend or maybe kindness, providing needs, that they began to see things differently. You know, there's I, power in that. Yes, I, I remind you of what Saba said. Uh, I had my uh, Saul experience. Now you, you can call me Paul, you know, so there has to be a conversion. So, 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 so Sonia, <clears throat> when you were, um, talking when you were saying um, about the love factor, you know, we can't do this on our own in our own human strength. We can't make that. We can't make that turn. And, and you know, and and and, and, and Sean, that, that's a real challenge that we all have. And I'm I'm glad that you're being transparent. You know how I you know I don't know. And some of some people who are looking and and listening and watching, you know, they're, they're struggling with that. Do, 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 do you do you have have some type of insight on how, you know, the how we know the why, <laughs> but the how is the struggle. Do, do you want me to share? 
Yeah, I, I got I, another um, story. Uh, you, you want Sonya to get it? Yes, yeah, Sonya, then you. Then that. Okay, your question is how... How do we get that, you know, how do we love that 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 person who has done us wrong or mm -hmm. you know well like you know, when, when we see all these these things and, and you know we identify with that and you know say hey that could be me right well th that has been me hmm. so so and I'm, <laughs> right <laughs> so i'm going to be uh totally transparent that has been me that's why i can say that you have to have a relationship with god because I was at a point where someone had done something bad to me that I couldn't even pray for this person. Mm. I, mean, I couldn't even pray for this person. It took me probably about a good three or four years when, when I could actually pray for this person. But I kept asking the Holy Spirit and God to change my heart, not change the person, but change mm. my heart to change me and how I looked at it, my viewpoint. And then that's why I said you have to die to self and you have to have a relationship with God. Because just as a, a mere person, because like I said, we're all born of sin and we're saved by the grace of God. When you ask God to, to, to work on your heart, to change your heart and your mind, he will definitely do that. So you have to have a relationship with God in order to make those changes. Because just me by myself, I will still be holding on to that old uh, spirit. So, so you have to have a relationship and you have to have God to help you and you have to ask him to help you to come mm. into your heart and your mind and so otherwise, like you said, you can't do it by yourself. I've been there and I'm just totally, I mean, I have a song in my heart. I can say the person and pray for the person and not have any bitter or ill feelings whatsoever. And that's God. Wow. I transform. Man. Mm. That. That's, that's an awesome testimony. Listen, just a practical word. First of all, um, the question you asked, Sean, has to do with when our natural impulses rise up, how do we deal with them? Anger is a natural impulse. It's neither good nor bad. It's the result of experiences. It's things that we know have happened. And there's probably a reason, a good reason why it rises up in us. But the difference between humans and animals, wild animals, mm. is we don't act on impulse. We have the opportunity to make decisions about what we will do despite how we feel. And what we're supposed to do according to Romans 12 and verse 20 is if uh, there's an enemy of yours who's hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them water. Now, that's a hard thing, but mm. you're, you're capable of doing it. You can't say, I can't do it. That's basically saying meet a need of your enemy. Here's an example of how that works. First of all, Jesus I can go to. And he demonstrated strength by meeting the needs of enemies and people's minds were changed because of the way he dealt with it. He didn't fight fire with fire. But at, mm -hmm. at, our, at, our, at our place, the well, uh, we have a um, person who manages it every day. And it's interesting, his mother didn't know why he would come and work uh, there because his brother was murdered right around the corner. From the church, right around the corner, murdered, murdered in cold blood. And the family believes they know who did it, but the person was never arrested, you know, charged or convicted. So he's walking free. Well, not very long ago, we have worship every uh, Monday morning. Every Monday morning, we have a chance to go into the word. I love that opportunity because the word changes us. It gets down into mm -hmm. the heart and it begins to change, change us. Short version. He gave the story this last Monday morning about how the things we've been talking about have made a difference in his life. And that person came into the well to our basketball tournament. He saw that person. Mm. And instead of reacting, he went outside. He walked around. He talked to God. He came back inside. He went over to that guy. And he happened to know that his nephew was having some problems was going the wrong direction. And he told him, listen, I know what's going on with your nephew. I'm going to work with him and help him. He walked away from that feeling different. And the guy was surprised that he would approach wow. him. We never have the opportunity to see people's minds and hearts change if we react to them the same way they've dealt with us. Christians have the opportunity like Jesus 
to deal with oppression and, and enemies in love. And that's the only thing that can change a mind and a heart. We can hold the enemy at bay with mm -hmm. our strength, but they can have their minds changed with our love. And then we can turn our backs on them and not worry about them stabbing us anymore. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it changes us. When we bless yeah. others, it changes us. And you walk away feeling good and strong. Amen. You know, so, I, I, I'm, to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I, we're going to end on that point. I mean, this was so powerful. You, you gave it to us on how we can love the stranger that is within our gates. So I am so glad that all you all were on this powerful message. I'm not going to say sermon because you know it, it, it was ministering to personal needs, and you know I and we had. Uh, Dr. Sonia, you know, your personal testimony, Stacy, Sean, you know, we love it. So at this time, I'm going to ask if Dr. Doggett, you can give us a, a closing uh, prayer. It, it was powerful. We, it was a blessing to have you on. It was a privilege. And I, I enjoyed being with such great people on this panel. It helps make me look good when I'm with good people. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray, though. Father, I thank you so much for this time you've allowed us to spend together discussing an important issue. We do recognize that when you come back for your children, you're not coming back for those who have embraced teachings, but those who have lived the teachings of your word. You've told us to love people, mm -hmm. to treat them with kindness, not just our friends and family, but even the strangers that are within our gates and our enemies. We recognize that you can give us the strength to do this and it will actually change people's minds and hearts and it will change the world. So please help us to be the kind of persons who will always, always act and not react. And Lord, may we see growth in ourselves, in our families, in our communities as we spread your love in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us again on another exciting, moving episode of the Quad Squad. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.